Hello and welcome to Take Time, I'm your host Patrick Marlatt. Today we're taking a look at both an upcoming model and a brief glimpse at a classic spinnaker design, the Hull Riviera Model 5073 and Bradner Bracelet Edition. Before we get into the video today, I want you all to know that both these models were gifted to the channel, so a special thanks goes out to Anna and the Spinnaker team for sending these my way. Now, as I like to do with all my reviews here on the channel, we're gonna start with the bad and then move on to the good before giving my final verdict on the review item. So without further ado, let's talk Riviera. We're going to focus in on the Riviera as it's new to the channel. If you want further details on the Bradner, I'll encourage you to watch one of my two previous videos on this piece. The Hull Riviera features a solid 316L stainless steel case with a 3 o'clock screw down crown boasting 10 Atmos water resistance. The top crystal is made of mineral glass and features anti-reflective coating, and at its heart the hull holds a Seiko NH35 automatic movement. Each model of the Hull Riviera will come with a matching leather strap. I'm not usually the person to make this complaint, having owned and worn through many a Seiko watch, but no sapphire? With the whole Riviera, we're treated to mineral crystal, which may come as a surprise if you're a Bradner boy like myself and expected a sapphire crystal. Personally, I don't mind this, but with the marginal difference in price, you'd think that the hull would too come with sapphire. I know for a lot of folks out there, some that follow this program, this is the breaking point even for a watch sub 300, as options within this range are plentiful nowadays. However, I will state the cut and execution of the crystal and its anti-reflective coating are top notch. Now there's no reason the watch need be this thick. I mean, 15 millimeters? Fortunately, it's not immediately noticeable on the wrist, but it is a cuff catcher. Spinnaker has always had trouble with scale, in my opinion, and the Hull Riviera continues that tradition. It's not necessarily the case's fault, but more so the protruding crystal. Back to that crystal again. I think if it was fitted with a flat crystal and pressed down to 12 millimeters thick, which is where about the bezel to case back measures, we'd have a much more flattering watch on our hands, or rather, our wrists. However, it's not all doom and gloom here in truth when compared to the rest of the Hall range, this model variant of the Riviera takes the cake. The pattern dial with both its sunburst finish and grooved face make for a handsome, and I'll use Spinnaker's words here, rackish overall design. The brushed markers and handset complement this dial perfectly, giving it a very professional look and feel on the wrist. And despite its thickness, the Hull Riviera is quite an enjoyable wear. It benefits by being slim in pretty much every other way. I can deal with a thick watch if the lug to lug and diameter isn't also overwhelming. Though I feel Spinnaker can make corrections on the overall scale of their pieces that did not make this any less enjoyable on the wrist. The large bobble crystal that highlights the face of this watch is a pleasure to take in and made all the more admirable when in contrast with the brushed bezel and high polished case that is executed so well for a sub $300 piece. The leather strap is of your typical stiff spinnaker variety, however it gets the job done and conforms to the wrist quite nicely over time. It is also rated to be water resistant to whatever degree that might be. Now here is the Spinnaker Hull Riviera on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. This is what it'll look like for all of your admirers and when you are going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. Before we go into the final verdict of the Hull Riviera, here's a quick look at Spinnaker's latest Bradner offering, the SP5062-22 Bracelet Bradner. Every bracelet variant will come with a textured dial, in either black, two-tone gray, or two-tone blue, as we have in today. This particular model also features gilt hands, minute track, and applied markers. However, and most importantly, we have a bracelet. It's a bead of rice style design featuring a three level micro adjustment clasp with dive extension and connected center links. How do I mean? The links themselves are not made from individual beads, but single pieces of steel. The fit and feel is just fine, but it won't conform to the wrist quite as well as a typical bead of rice bracelet. It is about $85 more for the Bradner on the bracelet. Now, is it worth it? I think if you are a bracelet obsessive like myself, 
then yes, you will probably enjoy this version of the watch. However, if you already own a Spinnaker Bradner or you simply don't like textured dials as none of these come with a non-textured dial, you can probably avoid this upgrade. However, if you're looking into the Bradner as your first Spinnaker offering, this is a good way to go. Again, here is the Spinnaker Bradner bracelet edition on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. This is what it'll look like for all of your admirers. And when you are going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. Affordable, stylish, and great value all come to mind when I consider the Spinnaker Hull Riviera. The thing that truly makes Spinnaker stand out as a brand is their consumer-friendly range of watches. Everything within that $300 budget. No one comes close to matching the amount of styles, construction, quality, and design execution within this range. Whether you're a beginning collector or seasoned vet, Spinnaker has a model for you. And the Hull Riviera might just be that one. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette and thank you for the time.